Hi and welcome to BRC TV as we march ever closer to Stradbroke season. After a very wet couple of weeks, the sun is shining down on us finally as we come to you from the top of Ascot House, the BRC's joint venture project with Mervac. It's one of a number of residential projects the BRC has undertaken recently and provides magnificent views of not only Eagle Farm, but the city behind us. Wouldn't this be a great posse to be on a Saturday afternoon? On today's show, we speak with one of Brisbane's most astute and quick-witted trainers in Barry Lockwood. Bart will be along with a few tips for Doombin, and we'll head to Larry Cassidy's home to reminisce about his great success on Doncaster Day ahead of his latest return from injury this weekend. But first, with Stradbroke season fast approaching, let's reflect on the past decade and some of the great horses we've seen here in Brisbane. But Black Caviar is the leader. She got away from Hayless with 100 metres left to go. Start number 13. Unlucky for some, not for this one. Temple of Boom and Spirit of Boom. They hit the line and Spirit of Boom got up and won the 10,000. Oh, he's got class on his side. He's home and Buffering raced away. Red Zell's in front, Darren flashing late as well from counter attack. Red Zell's in front from counter attack, Darren and Red Zell's won the 10,000. The Autumn Sun and Zusain, Zusain the inside, the Autumn Sun, the Autumn Sun stretches and wins, the Autumn Sun ahead to Zusain. Colding on the outside, going to Baccarat Baby, Baccarat Baby, Colding, Colding grabs the lead and Colding's won the guineas. Pierre Rada is the next one, but it's all Melody Bell with 100 metres left to go. It's racing clear with a size, five lengths in front, and Melody Bell, Melody Bell bolts in, five lengths taking aim. Pierre Rada third, Werther in front, he's off to the derby next week. Werther, it's a great, great trial. Zustar driving up on the inside of Villanova, takes the lead, draws away, and Zustar won the size from Villanova bound for Earth. Shadow Hero Creator, Shadow Hero's in front and Shadow Hero's won the first ahead Creator. Big jerk on the outside, but Val declares well clear for the boss man. Three lengths in front with 100 metres left to go. Big jerk runs to second, but it's all Val Declare. Val Declare, three lengths to Big Jerk. September run just in front, flashing Pluto Crat. September run, Pluto Crat. September run. The inside, Santa and Elaine coming through. Santa and Elaine hit the front from Paras Champagne. Cuddle Super Cash, Brack Me Up. Santa and Elaine for the Stratbroke. Santa and Elaine by two lengths. Inside the 200 metres mark, and Winks has raced to the lead from Imperial Ass, Ungrateful Allen. And this is a monstrous win in the Oaks. Winks ease down, three lengths, Ungrateful Allen. Well, we've certainly seen some good horses here over the past decade, Bart, and that sort of brings it to life, doesn't it? Yeah, the Winter Carnival's been a great breeding ground for horses to go interstate, and uh, in the last decade there's been some great horses here, not the least being Winx. No, that's right. <laughs> it's a good starting point. Yeah. We've had Black Caviar as well. Uh, we're here from the top of Ascot House today, Bart. It's the joint venture project with Murvac and the BRC. There's, this is Ascot House. We're at 90 residences here, and next door Tullock House which will be completed November this year with 84 residences, I think only four of those to sell. Yeah and look it's been a great investment for you, you've got 10 uh, apartments here and yeah. uh, you use this rooftop exclusively? As much as I can, yeah, yeah, good. as much as I can. What are we looking at? Look I think race three uh, number one cloak, I'm a little always hesitant about uh, 59 kilos on a heavy track and we've improved to a heavy nine but we are, are looking for, for soft footers and Cloak's a good weight carrier. He carried uh, 60 kilos uh, mid-year yep. and was successful at the Sunshine Coast on a heavy track. Uh, he's quickly up to the 1,600 metres, but uh, I don't see much opposition. No, no, no. It's, a, it's not an overly strong race, that's for sure, and you're sticking with the strength of the stable, which is going gangbusters. Yeah, David Van Dyke in magic form. Mm. What's next? Race 8, number 2, uh, Racecourse Road. Mm -hmm. um, I hate going against Jaden Tom because she's been good to us, um, but Racecourse Road got a nice weight advantage and gee, he was good at the coast. A yeah. month between runs I think is ideal for him. He had them yeah. covered a long way out at the coast. Yeah, yeah. I'll make Express Princess the best here. It goes to the mile, I think rolls forward for Jimmy Byrne. No worries on wet ground and she was pretty good last time we saw her in town. Anything for the big Doncaster today in Sydney? Uh, I thought the size Animo the favourite would be hard There's to beat. It's sometimes with two-year-olds, you're worried whether they, they go off. Animo came from second last to run second there. I don't think he'd be that far away in a 1,400 metre race. No. Well, I'm hoping it's a big day for Godolphin because you've got Animo there and I think they can win the Doncaster with either Avilius or Cascadia. Yeah, terrific race, the Doncaster. Gee, it has been wonderful over the years and great field this year. 
Eagle Farm trainer Barry Lockwood has just about seen it all in his time in racing. I caught up with him this week to talk about his doom and winner this week and also how the game has changed over the years. It's Isabella Spring from I'm a Beauty and Marto. Isabella Spring is in front. I'm a Beauty can't go with Isabella Spring and Isabella Spring heavily backed as two good defeats. I'm a Beauty. In the winner's circle again on, on Monday, Barry, with a, with a horse. It's been a bit of a nightmare for punters, but she, she did the right thing on, on Monday, Isabella Spring. Yeah, she did. Uh, she has been a nightmare. She should have won one easy, like early in her preps, but uh, just promising all the way through and finding a way to get beat. But anyway, come off on, on Monday. Every time it seems you get a winner, the commentary's made that, oh, Barry Lockwood, the money trainer. What do you make of all that commentary? Well, I don't know where they put the money because I've only got a tent to live in and uh, <laughs> I'd say my future lies in uh, dying on the job. So, uh, no, there's not too much money involved. <laughs> but you still get great satisfaction out of being able to set a horse up and, and pick out a race that oh, looks yeah. suitable? There's no, no doubt in the world about that. I mean, that, that's my upbringing, I suppose, in racing, which a lot of the younger blokes now, it comes in and it's a, it's a different style of racing altogether. But uh, early days, if you didn't set one up for everyone to get money, uh, you'd starve, you know. And, uh, and plenty of times you starve for a year until one come along that you could have a bet on and, and the owners and everyone else, and, and that's what you did. In, in more recent times, you've also become known here for a place where visiting stables love to have their horses stay. You had Victorum last year win a good race, and um, you know, in more recent times, you've got Wren's Day here at the moment. Do you enjoy having those visiting horses? Well, I think that comes from growing up in the bush. I met the, a lot of these guys and you know their parents and everything else when I was training in the bush, and they get to know that everything's right. We'll send it to Barry, it'll be fine, he'll look after it. And have you got a, your next winner for the punters? Where's the next winner going to come from? Well, I think the filly that won at uh, Doombin um, a couple of weeks back, uh, Drizzle, mm -hmm. she's in on Sunday in a, a nice restricted race and she won't be much of a price, but she's a, a pretty handy filly, I think. Larry Cassidy is set to make his latest comeback to riding at Doombin this weekend. Larry was kind enough to welcome us into his home this week, where he showcased his magnificent lawn and also reflected on some of his greatest successes, which included a couple of Doncasters and an AJC Derby on this corresponding weekend. Look at Wing, she's come from last. She stormed down the outside. Oh, what a win. Here with Larry Cassidy, who makes a comeback to riding this weekend after another injury break. But first of all, Larry, thanks for having us in your uh, your home. It's a beautiful home. Yeah, thanks. I wish the weather was a bit better <laughs> and um, we probably could have been outside and showing you the, the concrete that, that Winks helped me build. <laughs> <laughs> well, as we walked in, we saw that magnificent lawn, so you've got a career as a curator. Uh, yeah, riding. I don't know about that. It's only, it's only a very small area and easy to look after. And um, uh, yeah, it looks really good, but uh, that's because we've got plenty of water. <laughs> right, speaking of good, how's the, how's the wrist come back from wrist the, is, the Yeah, wrist is really good. Road track work. Um, uh, this morning. You must be getting good at these comebacks now. That they, they won't get in, they wouldn't get any easier, I wouldn't imagine. No, um, you know, as you get older you don't you don't bounce as bounce as well and uh, but I've you know I've, so I've made a few comebacks. Uh, I suppose the biggest one with my knees. Mm. And yeah, it's just a matter of um, making sure you're right and, and getting fit and before you get back on a horse. Yeah, I do think it's a, it's a fitting week for you to come back on Derby Doncaster Day. It's a, a day that was very good to you over the years. You won two Doncasters, a Derby, and also a TJ in, in its early years yes. on Ab Initio. But yeah. talk us, the Doncaster, you won the first one on Secret Savings for Gay, who was an American import. Yeah. And then of course, a couple of years later on Sunline. Yeah, like, so she was uh, obviously the gun three-year-old mm. filly and um, obviously, um, you know, I thought yeah, she, she was weighted, weighted good. I think yeah. she had 51 and a half. Mm. And they sort of, I got a little bit of a breather and then um, they sort of attacked me again at the 600 and that's when I just started to let her really stride. I was still had hold of her coming up the hill mm. and you know, once we sort of got to the top of the hill and flattened out, um, when I let her down, she just exploded. Yeah, it's a great feeling. You, the one you're riding on Saturday is not as fast, but we should give it a mention because the, the guys behind the cameras yep. uh, are in this Chris Anderson <laughs> horse, uh, Hello Girl. So, you didn't ride her last time, but the previous couple, she was pretty impressive. Yeah, she, she's she's a lovely mare. She's come back really well, and um, you know, I, I find her fairly simple to ride. Um, you know, she hasn't got great gate speed. Just just let her get back, and um, when she wants to get going, you just come out three deep and just ride a track gallop from there as mm -hmm. if there's nothing else, and just go around the field, and then she can really let down. So uh, obviously, she was a bit disappointing last start. She's had a bit of a freshen up, so. Hopefully the track's not too wet sad day and um, yeah, she'll give me a win first back. That's it for BRC TV. Good luck finding a few winners this weekend. <laughs>